beyond the strong city walls of the city of Lovangen lies the Sea of Glitch. <laughs> Seriously, you haven't really played a game until you went out of bounds. Today I'm going to show you how you can bind any type of unofficial manual or strategy guide on the example of one of my favorite games. First though, let me tell you a little bit about the game. Because you probably don't know it, but you really should. The term hidden gem is thrown around an awful lot these days. But as far as old school RPGs go, this really is one. First things first, this is part 2 of a trilogy. But it's the one I'm going to recommend to you, for reasons I'll get into later on. So let's take a look at the box. It's got a front side and a back side and it comes jam-packed with goodies. First of which is the jewel case for the two CDs. There also is a floppy version of this game with, um, well, no speech and a different soundtrack I would hazard to guess. So well that obviously doesn't come with the box, it's my personal hint book because I don't use a solution and you will need one of those if you're gonna play this game. This is the manual and a quite hefty one at that um, and it's required reading. You won't get around that. Yeah. Next up is the map and these are one of the most beautiful parts of all of the um, Realms of Acadia um, game series, I think. I've always enjoyed this. It looks a lot different, much more like a real map. And then there's a bunch of leaflets that nobody really cares about. This won't be a complete review of the game. I'm just quickly gonna tell you what makes the series so special and why I think you should give it a try. Now, the most drastic difference to most RPGs you will have played is obviously the system it is based on. While a lot of the games you may have played are based on the Dungeons and Dragons license, this game is based on Das Schwarze Auge, The Dark Eye, which is a German version of Dungeons and Dragons, I guess. Therefore, it comes with a completely different set of rules and different lore. It's just, it, it accumulates to a completely different game than what the what you may be used to from Dungeons and Dragons games, or, or other games for that matter, that didn't have the license, but mostly were inspired by these games. Now, a few things should be familiar to you from the... well, if, you, if you're coming from the old school side of RPGs. For example, that it's really hard. It, it's punishing, and at least to me, I am underpowered most of the time, and I've had Walking Dead situations, and I don't like those. Well, yes, I, I had to restart it like three times just to get my characters right. And they're not right at all, by the way. They kind of suck. You also have to read the manual. Especially if you're coming from the Dungeons & Dragons side of things. Things are different in this game. And you won't know how to make heads or tails of it if you haven't read the manual. So even before you start the game, read the entire manual. And even then, I read the entire manual and as I said, I had to get new character sets over and over again. You should also make notes. Now this game has an auto note system and you can jot down anything anybody says into your journal at any point you want to. And you can edit your journal yourself. But you need to make notes anyway. And while this game has an auto map feature, personally I map out the entire cities and then I print them. Because I don't want to use a solution and you need to mark out where people and things are in the cities. You can do that in game, but personally, well, I, I like to do things with my hand. I'm, I'm used to that from the, from the olden times. <laughs> you should also probably read up some additional information on this game, like a strategy guide, and you can get pretty much all you need on Crystal's DSA forums. 
So here are a few things that you won't be familiar with. This map screen, for example, you will spend a lot of time on this map screen. Because a lot of time in this game is spent getting to the locations like cities or dungeons. You will use this travel screen to map out the route and to decide where to make camp. This is actually an important part of the game and you'll have to invest in quite the number of survival items in order to, well, survive. You'll have to use things like blankets so not to freeze to death and um, a handful of other items helping you to procure food and to cook it or for example to start a fire. You'll also have to look for herbs to cure not only the occasional poisoning and of course your wounds but illnesses that you will without a doubt contract on your travels. This is also where a lot of the fighting happens because depending on where you set up camp you will be attacked at night even if you have guards on hand. You will also spend a lot of time in the cities doing odd jobs for sketchy fellows that you met in even sketchier bars. You'll stay at the local inns, bribe the gods in their temples and you can even schedule the odd visit to the brothel. Yeah, remember how people flipped their shit because you could restore some health in GTA by fucking a hooker? Well, we never had such problems here in Germany. If you have a mixed race, mixed sex party, they even have a fun little message you get when you stay at a brothel that translates to something like, depending on their sex and sexual orientation, your individual characters spend a more or less enjoyable night at the brothel. Now keep in mind that's my translation, not the game's, because I've actually never played Star Trail in English. The cities are also where you make most of your money in a lot of inventive ways. You might for example choose to make an idiot of yourself by singing and dancing at the local tavern. Yeah, ich bin der shit, bitches. Turn my swagger on, getting money, I'm a rich nigga. All you risk is ridicule, but the profits are meager too. You might also try your hands as a card shaper or outright steal from people, or shops for that matter, where the profits are much higher, but the possible consequences are much more dire. Guess what? Consequences will never be the same, you lying bunch of pricks! That is, until later in the game, where you find out that, much like in real life, the most profitable undertaking is becoming a black market weapons dealer. Yeah, why fight a war if you could fund a war? You'll also spend a lot of time in dungeons, but they clearly aren't the main focus here. Should you play the game, you will soon notice that this difference in structure and type of quests sets it apart from most other games you're used to and makes it feel much more alive than the average dungeon crawler. One of the most drastic differences in mechanics of this game is clearly the battle system. I've kept that for last because, at least to me, it's a boon and a bane. It is heavily strategic turn-based combat from a top-down perspective somewhat reminiscent of the Heroes of the Might and Magic battle system. The thing is, this battle system goes much more in depth than that of Heroes of the Might and Magic. On the one hand, that means you can battle overpowered enemies, um, if you are able to use your wits. And you can change the outcome of a battle in your favor, if you really get into it. And fans of this type of combat system will certainly feel at home. On the other hand, it also means that battles can become quite tedious and long. So the fact that this game can auto-calculate the outcome of a battle is a godsend. Sure, a calculated battle will most of the time be much worse than if you fought it on your own, but if it's an easy battle, it's a real time saver. And that brings me to the reason why I don't necessarily recommend playing the first part in the series first. That feature, the ability to calculate whole battles, that's missing in the first part. While I think that the first game is graphically much more pleasing, because I'm a fan of the true 2D style of the game and none of that early 3D stuff you can see in the second and third parts, the fighting in the first game can get really extensive and really tedious. Add to that the fact that it costs you experience to save a game and you got the reason why I advise you to play the second part first. Don't get me wrong, it's a great game, but its brutal nature may keep you from even getting far enough to enjoy what the game really has to offer. Well, enough with the chit chat. If I haven't sold you on the game by now, well, it's your loss. But maybe I can still sell you on binding your own custom strategy guide.
All you're gonna need for this is some glue, a paintbrush, a few clamps, clothespins will also do, some strong paper, I use packing paper, some colored paper and two pieces of cardboard. And the thing you want to bind, of course. I have pre-cut all my paper for convenience, but the sizes you will need depend on the size of the thing you want to bind. But this isn't rocket science, you'll figure it out. You should also know the machine direction of your paper. If you don't know how to find that out, Google can help you. Ready? Good. To start off, you take two pieces of packing paper that are folded over and place them on each side of the thing you want to bind. Now make sure that the fold of the paper is where the spine of your strategy guide or whatever is going to be. The size of the packing paper obviously is twice the size of the thing you want to bind. Not rocket science, remember? Make sure that all of it forms a neat stack. When you're satisfied with your stack, clamp it down on the side opposite of what's going to be your spine. Okay, then listen up, because this one is important. You're going to glue the spine now. If you fuck this up, your pages are going to fall out, so do a good job. You should also take a glue that stays somewhat flexible when it dries. None of that dry, hard stuff. I just bought a tube of hobby glue that cost way too much money. You need to bend the spine to one side and apply the glue with your brush. Use enough glue, but don't drown it. This is also where you need to know the machine direction. You can only apply glue along the machine direction, because otherwise it will get all wobbly on you when it dries. This has got something to do with the fibers in the paper and which direction they're pointing, um, but all printer paper I have encountered had the machine direction running along the long side. But you take that advice at your own peril. In the second step, you bend the spine over to the other side and again, apply plenty of glue. Try not to make too much of a mess. Run your fingers along the spine and press it together. When you're done with it, put it away somewhere. Raise it up a little maybe. Try not to glue it to the table or some dumb shit. Next you'll have to cut another piece of packing paper. Same length as the spine and, well, broad enough to wrap around the spine. Just, you'll figure it out. Spread plenty of glue on it and make sure only to spread it on one side. I know it's against my nature too, but it really pays not to make a mess here. Otherwise, sooner than you know, you'll have stuff sticking everywhere. Things get stuck to other things, surfaces, maybe even body parts, and depending on the type of glue you're using, quite the awkward visit to the hospital may ensue. No, but seriously, just don't fuck it up. Okay, when you're done with that, you stick it to the spine of your book, for lack of a better word. Again, whenever you're working on the spine of the book, it pays to do the job right. So make it a tight fit, put some effort into it, and... If you're lucky, it will look somewhat less shitty than mine. Look at that, done like a true professional. Okay, make really sure that the spine is good and tight. It doesn't have to be a beauty, but it needs to be workable. 
Okay, next up you're gonna glue the colored paper to the cardboard. Obviously you don't have to use colored paper. You could use, I don't know, a print of the cover of your strategy guide or something. It's gonna be the cover of the book. Just go wild. As you can see in the background, um, during this I've put some pressure on the spine of the book. So you might think about doing something like that too. Quick round of applause by the way for my lovely assistant who came to my aid when I ran out of glue. So the size of the cardboard you're using. I chose to make mine a little longer than um, the thing I wanted to bind. But I also chose to make it less broad because I thought it might interfere with the spine. Well, as it turns out, it doesn't and it looks a bit dumb. So may maybe just make it a little bit bigger than the thing you want to bind on length as well as width. You will want to make it a little bit bigger than the thing you want to bind because you want the edges to protrude. Well, whatever size you settle on, your colored paper should be a few inches bigger so you can fold over the corners just like that. So you get the gist of what's going on here. Pro tip, you gotta do this twice for each side of the book. Okay, then you're up to the final step in the process. Gluing the covers to the book. Now take a piece of paper and put it in between um, the book and the first page, so you don't make a mess, and start applying the glue. Now you will want to stop a few inches short of the spine, so once again you don't make a mess of it. Don't worry, you'll see where I'm going with this. And again, you will have to do this twice, but I'm only going to show it to you once. Now you're gonna take the cover and apply a bit of glue to the side that will be closest to the spine. See what I did there? That way we won't have the problem of having glue on our spine. Carefully align your cover with the spine. Also try to keep things equal when you glue on the other side of the case. Coming up you'll see a good example of why you should keep things clean when you're fucking around with glue. That was a close one. Okay, remember the rule of the spine, it's not to be fucked with, everything good and tight. Don't worry if you got a bunch of crinkles in there because you didn't bother to check the machine direction of the packing paper. Just use something straight with a nice edge to flatten it out. Don't worry, it'll look much better when it's dry. Okay, then do it with the other side and you're pretty much done. Now obviously you can't open the book yet, right? Give it. 24 hours to dry or something. Of course your waiting period may vary depending on the type of glue you used and probably on your patience. Just don't open it too early so the sides won't come tumbling out. It's probably your best bet to put a bunch of weight on it and let it dry overnight. So now my Realms of Acania Star Trail collection is finally complete. This is the official t-shirt and it actually seems to be a bit rare, considering that the guy who holds the world record for the biggest dark eye collection had some trouble finding it. My uncle gave that to me when I was a kid and I've actually had it longer than I've had the game. And now to the item of the day, the custom strategy guide for the game. Pretty much all I did to finish it up is take a black marker and color in the spine, because I'm professional like that. I wanted to take this moment to say a few words about the strategy guide. The fact that a thing like this is immensely handy when playing a game like Star Trail is not the only reason why I 
get a hold of it, and especially not why I bound it. I know a labor of love when I see one, and this strategy guide truly is one. From the wealth of information that it hosts, to the way it is written, and even, even the layout. Everything about this is well made. You need to appreciate how much work went into making this thing. This strategy guide is written in German, obviously. But if you speak German and want to get a hold of it, it might be a little bit difficult. Your best bet is to contact the guy who made it through the DSA forums. I don't know how comfortable he is with naming names, but if he gets back to me on this, I will provide anything he's happy to give in the description. And that's it for today, kids! Now you know how to bind your custom strategy guides and have a wholesome weekend project that helps you stay off drugs or something. Enjoy! If you ain't got shit to do, why not watch more of my videos? Here's one on why I hate Windows 10. Or maybe DOS gaming is more of your thing. We got plenty of that here too. You know, we even got abstract shit like Overworld Zero. That is the RPG minigame from System Shock 2, if you didn't know. And if you liked anything you saw, feel free to help me out. Share the videos, do all that good social media stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Have a good one.